Hey guys, welcome back to another video. If this is your first time watching me, my name is Cyril. I run a plant Instagram page called Cyril's Hibernated. And today we're going to talk about cats and how you could maintain or stop your cats really from eating your plants. So I have three Persian cats. I'm, oh, by the way, if you're not following me, my name is Cyril Cybernated on Instagram. And on Instagram, I post about three of my cats, namely Storm, who is a 13 going 14 year old Persian cat. And I also have Tsunami. She's my chocolate um, Persian cat and she turned two in May. And my youngest is Monsoon. Monsoon is going to turn two on September and she's a calico. So Monsoon is also the naughtiest. Are we going to agree? You're not the naughtiest. Yeah, you are. So today I did try to outline what I'm going to talk about just so my thoughts are organized because I do have a tendency to just blabber and blabber. And I'm going to try to keep this around 15, 20 minutes. So basically um, on my Instagram page, I would say like four or half of the questions out of 10 that I get on a daily basis is about how do I keep my cats from eating my plants. So hopefully this video will provide you guys with enough material to also help you out, um, you know, keeping a safe environment for our cats or even just our pets in general, while also um, continuing to fulfill your plant lady, plant daddy um, dreams or fantasy. So the first item that I have identified or a first factor that is important for you to know about is know your cat. So for me, my cats are all of, well, their breed is Persian cats. So I know, I think Tsunami is half Himalayan Persian, but most of them, the common factor is all of them are Persian cats and Persian cats are really lazy. <laughs> They're like, very good lab cats so in general their behavior is just very chill so um that's one factor that you have to consider if you are still gonna get a cat know about the breeds their um behavior and how they tend to act so persians are very chill like this one is a very good lab cat i even sleep with her most of the time because she's just like chilling when she wags her tail like that I don't know sometimes it means that she's annoyed sometimes it means that she's enjoying what you're doing so another thing is that i think the gender of your cats play a factor so all my cats are female persian cats so in my experience storm is turning 14 and i've had her for a few years um, they're pretty chill she's storm is like my old lady cat she doesn't really care about the plants at all Tsunami, we got her since she was like eight weeks old or two months, something, two months and a half. So she basically grew up with all these plants and most of these plants are probably even older than Tsunami. And Monsoon, we got her when she was nine months old. Yeah, she was already nine months then and it's been a year since we've had Monsoon, our youngest kitty. So um, Monsoon practically did not grow up in a household that has a lot of plants. I mean, for Tsunami, I know that I kind of conditioned her to be in a household full of plants. Storm and Monsoon did not grow up in a household full of plants. So that's something that you have to consider. If you are adopting, of course, breed is not going to be something that you could determine. Well, it's going to be based on your options and the gender as well but yeah those are important factors to consider too because boy cats tend to be really naughty depending on their breed and of course they're like kids they have their own personalities so boy cats really tend to be naughty you know most of the time but that's just an over generalization but you could use as that, that as your baseline info next is when you introduce or if you already have plants and you know if you're adopting a cat introducing or reinforcing plants is really important so for monsoon and storm well for storm she had she used to have a well she is so used to a house without a lot of plants it's just a few orchids and fresh flowers every now and then so when i introduced the plant it wasn't really like a very subtle introduction it was like 10 20 plant every week and she was at the beginning she was kind of like overwhelmed but um 
through time, she was kind of like, meh, I don't really care about all these plants. And then for Tsunami and Monsoon, since they are younger, I expected them to be more playful, and they are very playful. I still have clips of Monsoon and Tsunami trying to nibble on some plants, and we'll talk about what plants are okay to be nibbled or whatnot later on. So, well, basically the bottom line of the second bullet point is int on introducing or reintroducing plants to your cats is that Try to introduce it slowly, if as slow as possible, just so they are accustomed to all these new factors in the environment. Um, moving on, we're going to talk about removing your planty temptation. So these kitties or your fur babies will have their own instincts. So for my cats, they're very much of a hunter and anything that moves or mimics like the jungle or the wilderness, it will trigger them, especially Monsoon, she's the youngest. So she is still very responsive to stimulus. Um, a stem that's kind of like moving or a plant that is very grass-like, it's something that she will gravitate to. And it's going to be, for me, it's our job as like a cat or plant, you know, a cat or a dog parent or a fur parent for us to be responsible enough to get rid of all these temptations. We could do that by putting your plants in shelves or knowing which ones are dangerous and keeping those dangerous plants away from them. So, you know, we have to know better. Um, we have to know which ones we should um, take away from their reach. Next is, yeah, keeping your plant shelfy full. So if you notice, this shelfy in this room is very full. That is because cats will automatically gravitate towards a space that's still you know empty and that's where they're gonna perch for example this windowsill i do keep the left side vacant and the right side is filled with plants because they tend to perch um during on that side of the window during the day and it's something that i could um um determine or it's something that i could um manipulate it's a factor that i could change or manipulate so when you do keep your plant shelfies full, it doesn't give them a space to squeeze themselves, although cats are really flexible. Um, dogs wouldn't really try to go somewhere that they think wouldn't fit them, but these cats are everywhere. I've sometimes, sometimes seen them at the back of this shelf, even though it's already full. Um, but when they're very playful, they tend to, you know, um, they tend to just like squeeze themselves. She's stubborn. Yeah, what are you doing? They just tend to squeeze themselves in these tiny nooks and crannies and they're able to do that because they have very flexible bodies. Next, um, you provide your catnip. I mean, they used to have catnips, but through the two and a half years that I've had plants, um, only Storm is the only one who likes to do or um, sniff the catnip. The younger kitties of mine don't bother. So if your cat is someone that gets, oh my God, a lot of cat, cat hair. So if your cat is a, um, a type that would um, love catnip, it really helps. You know, you could just go to the pet store, buy the grassy or the leafy ones, and there's a lot of hair flying everywhere. That's what happens. Another problem is you have to vacuum every time. But um, yeah, just buy it. Try a, buy buying a pot. Try buying a pot of catnip and see how they react to that. Usually giving them their own plant to chew or nibble that we are for sure, sure. <laughs> that is safe for them really helps i i know some friends who this trick worked for them so that is something that you might want to consider buy catnip or buy toys that have catnip so that's the thing that they would try to nibble or play with next is no toxic and non-toxic plants so i do have some um cat and dog safe plants um that i will be identifying my rule is all always follow the ASPCA.org website. So if you're unsure of something, I what I mm, personally do is if it's part of that genus, I automatically assume all plants under that genus or family is safe or not safe. That's just the safest way to go. So some of the examples of cat or dog safe plants are <clears throat> number one, your African violet. By the way, could we just appreciate how beautiful my African violet is even though it had some broken stems over here because my cats were playing in the shelves and when I tried to pick up Monsoon, her leg got stuck, well, knocked off the leaf here. So 
yes, African violets are safe. This is a variegated one. So they're normally just like green like this in the supermarket. So you see them quite often. They're very popular. They've always been popular. So the African violets are safe. Of course, everybody probably knows that the spider plant or Chlorophytum comosum is also cat safe and dog safe. We also have the Venus flytrap. Um, um, some of your carnivorous plants are safe. I keep mine outside, so it's not doing well, by the way. And then we also have the Areca or your parlor palm, or I think Majesty palm is also safe. And because of that grass-like feature, it makes it very dangerous because the cats are automatically gravitating towards those kind of, of plants. Um, we also have Boston ferns. Monsoon loves the Boston fern. Um, whenever I put the Boston fern on the ground for a photo, for example, she can't help it. She's just gonna nibble on it. I guess something about the crunchiness and the texture of the leaves and the size too makes it really easy to munch on. But those are safe. We also have Calatheas or Calatheas or Maranta. Some of your prayer plants are also safe for your cats. Um, we have the polka dot plants. I think the nerve plant is also safe. Um, we have peperomia. So this is a peperomia obtusifolia variegata, which needs a good watering. Once you like sneezing. I know, girl, your hair is too much. And then this is also just the regular form, but I think it's kind of a little bit variegated, but it's not super clear. This one needs watering. It's not doing well. And we also have orchids. So I did have an orchid, orchid in our coffee table and was um, doing well until until it dropped all the leaves already and I had to move it. But Monsoon used to like nibble on the juicy thick leaves of the orchid. And we also have air plants. Um, this is a Xerographica, Tilangia Xerographica, which if you notice, the tips are very juice, not juicy, but grass type. And when the tips are like brown and crispy like this, they really love, let me just take this off. They really love the consistency or I don't know, it's very crunchy, I guess. So air plants are also cat safe. Um, of course, succulents, um, most of the succulents are cat or pet safe. Um, I keep mine, most of mine outside. So they are really away from the plants. And then lastly, we have the Pachira aquatica or your money tree. So those are also cat safe plants. And for not well dangerous or toxic to cats, I would say everything else. I mean, and Monstera, Monstera, this is a Monstera thigh constellation. And these are dangerous. I remember Storm used to love to nibble on my Deliciosa because it was somewhere very accessible. So I had to move my Deliciosa to an inaccessible place. And then um, your philodendrons also have a lot of oxalates. I think those are oxalates. Yeah, that will be irritating to their mouth. Monsoon, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Okay, she wants the door open. Um, we, the anthuriums are also dangerous to your cats uh, or dogs. So those are some of the non -toc a little toxic plants. Next um, pointer would be to protect your plants. So if you know something's precious, like this one, um, my Monstera thigh uh, constellation, I would put, I have it in a huge, well, a tall plant stand so that my cats don't have easy access to it. Or for like my um, Aglonemas, I think are safe, but my Aglonema pictum tricolor is, is one of my like more precious plants in my collection. So I have those inside my terrarium or my bio orb. Um, you could also use terrariums or like these tiny greenhouses to protect your plants or your clutches to protect your plants from getting nibbled by your plants. That use That is still a trick that I use right now. Um, next is playtime. Make sure that you play with your cats because when they're bored, that's the time that they would try to catch your attention. That's the time that they would nibble the plant right in front of you. And it's not, it doesn't just happen to me at all. A lot of my friends who own cats do or notice that as well. So they're like purposely nibbling on something just to catch your attention. And playing with them, doing like a scheduled playtime will kind of like tire them and also guarantee that um, they don't really need to beg for your attention. So... Next is make sure that you provide a litter box, a clean litter box all the time and your scratch bowls. So 
Storm is too old not to always want to scratch anymore, but Monsoon and Tsunami, they're only four months apart. Yes, four months apart, and they're only turning around two this year. So they're still at that very young and playful stage. So scratch poles still help them after they do their laps in the hallway, they're gonna scratch. So I have heard, by the way, of people saying that their cats try to dig up on their um, plants. So also putting like coverings or, or toppings um, would also help them. I've seen people put like um, foil, tin foil on top of their plants to prevent their cats from doing that. I noticed on social media that, you know, cats don't like tin foil and they don't, they don't like the feel, I guess. So that's something, that's a trick that you could do. Um, and what else? I've seen other people like put chicken wire around their huge floor plants just to prevent their cat from like digging. So if you do, because cats, cats are highly trainable. So if you do provide them with a place where they should, you know, do their number ones or number twos, they wouldn't be bothered in doing that in your plant or inside your pot. So just providing them with that clean, safe space, private space for them to do their deed is really important. And then I've also heard it from people that, you know, they try to spray their pets, cats, dogs, or their fur babies in general to discourage them from biting their or nibbling on their plants. I don't want to do that. I haven't been doing that because none of my cats are, I would say like they haven't been naughty in a way that I really needed to do that. I would not encourage that kind of behavior for you as you know the plant parent because I think it just um, tries to develop fear in them and they don't really like they will just still do it when you're not around to spray them with water or something. So I don't think that's very effective, but it's what some other people do. And it's something that also worked for them. So it might work for you. And then lastly, to wrap this all up, I guess it's about um, just really finding out what factors will work for you. Um, if you can't really like train your cats then I think you might need to do a dedicated plant room. I know my other friends of mine have their own plant rooms and that's where they keep all their plants to keep their cats away from that room. Shut the door and that will basically solve your problem. Um, so I guess I've covered everything. If you do have uh, some questions that I haven't covered, please do comment down below. If you like this kind of content, more educational or more informative, like the video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will try my best to put out more content, more um, valuable content for you know people who want to try to keep pets and cats or plants at the same time. And I believe um, for the past two and a half years, both of those factors have been harmoniously coexisting for me. So I think everyone has the capability of doing that as well. So yeah, just sound off in the comments if you have something to ask me. I'll try my best to respond in a very timely manner. Again, my name is Cyril. You can follow me on Cyril's Hibernated. And um, so yeah, have a great day. And I hope you guys will be able to um, be a cat mommy, cat daddy, and a plant daddy at the same time as well. Thank you for watching the video. Bye.